welcome to the NPC Now podcast, the National Pharmaceutical Council's conversation with healthcare experts about current trends. I'm Andrea Hofflick. I'm joined today by Dr. Mark McClellan, who's director of the Healthcare Innovation and Value Initiative at the Brookings Institution. What's the right balance between incentives for cost control and measures for assessing quality? Is there a way that we can strike the right balance? I think the measures for quality of care go along with the reforms in payments towards encouraging more efficiency and lower overall cost. What we've seen is that healthcare organizations often start out in a limited way with payment reforms, something like shared savings, but they keep their fee-for-service payments too. And that's often accompanied by some starter performance measures. That's what's happened in the Medicare ACO program. But as providers get more comfortable with identifying ways for improving results and lowering costs for their patients, they often find that they need bigger shifts in payments to support those changes in care. It's awfully hard to move care out of the hospital and into the home uh, with just a few minor tweaks to traditional fee-for-service payment systems. With those bigger shifts in payments can come bigger changes in performance measurement and more accountability for better results. Without measuring every condition, how can we know that good quality of care is being delivered? Is there a way that we can guard against overuse or underuse of care? First, it's most important to remember that healthcare providers are in it because they want to improve patient care. Now, that certainly doesn't work perfectly, but one of the best things we have going for us with payment reforms is that giving healthcare providers more flexibility in reforming care can lead to changes in the way they provide services, uh, more convenient services, more targeted and effective services that just aren't paid for under fee-for-service. So that's an important thing to remember. That said, having performance measures where there is evidence of gaps in quality and there is evidence that uh, care could be better can help. And so having uh, additional performance measures along with these changes in payments can be a good step towards getting to better outcomes as well. What are the most important gaps in accountable care measure sets? Are there any actions that we can take to fill those gaps? There are some good measures available for a number of common conditions in the Medicare population and now as payment reforms have been implemented in the private sector and in Medicaid programs, we're seeing more measures there. So for conditions like diabetes, there are some measures of processes of care and even more importantly, measures of patient outcomes. Uh, but those don't exist or aren't being used in many other areas. One of the points of the uh, NPC report was that there are some measures currently available or that could be made available that could help fill a number of these gaps. So for example, for patients with HIV or hepatitis C, right now there are no measures directly related to those conditions in the Medicare programs for uh, accountable care payments. But there are measures that could be used, like viral load measures, so sustained viral response in patients with hepatitis C, or uh, the levels of uh, HIV RNA in the blood of patients with HIV. Effective medication therapy and effective management generally involves taking those levels down to undetectable levels. Uh, and that is something that is potentially measurable and it could be included. Not every condition has measures available like that, but those are some examples of outcome measures that could be used in conditions now to augment the current measure sets. How can we engage patients in quality measurement and improvement? Some of the most important developments recently in measurement have come from patient-led efforts and efforts that focus on patient engagement. Um, some examples of these are disease-specific, where uh, patients with conditions that their functional status matters have helped develop ways through online forums, through uh, social networks, uh, to track how patients are doing and showing that this can be done. So for conditions like multiple sclerosis, uh, patients like me has lots of examples online of patients tracking uh, their functional condition day to day. These are, thing, these are approaches that could be used more systematically 
uh, in measurement. There also are good measures of patient engagement with care, how much they feel like the healthcare system is working with them, their healthcare providers are working with them uh, to meet their needs. Those needs may vary across individuals. And if, if, if we're really focused on improving patient well-being, it's important to have measures that are more reflective of what pa the patient voice in uh, the, the performance measurement systems. And again, there are examples of these kinds of measures out there that could be more widely used in performance improvement systems. And why aren't these processes more widely used? Well, this is an iterative process, so we've seen some payment reforms that in many ways are, are quite limited, that are still based primarily on fee-for-service payment, on volume and intensity of services, and we've seen some improvements and measures to go along with it. I'd like to see that become much more of a virtuous cycle where uh, we can take faster steps towards changing the way that we pay and supporting better results for patients by providing support for the systems that can actually report better on performance measures too. So many of the steps that providers would like to take that aren't well supported now include uh, interoperable data systems and decision support systems that would bring better information to the healthcare provider at the point of care to get better results for a patient. Uh, by promoting the use of those systems and paying for it, uh, we can get both better care and better performance measures as well. When you've spoken about quality measures before, you've mentioned taking a layered approach to measurement. What kinds of measures are best for this external accountability or uh, internal management? One of the main areas of focus for external accountability or public reporting of measures or measures that might be used in payment system uh, is an emphasis on shifting towards more outcome-based measures. Uh, measures like uh, clinical outcomes for a condition or functional outcomes for a patient or measures of patient experience or engagement with care. Uh, these are the things that people really care about and are probably cl most closely related to what they would like to see uh, happen for themselves or their loved ones. Um, that's in contrast to the very important process improvements or structural improvements in a healthcare organization. Having a better health IT system, having a team-based approach to care, uh, following the, the latest uh, evidence-based uh, recommendations for care, uh, coordinating care effectively. You know, these things all get to the better results for patients, but uh, are probably not things that uh, need to be reported or should be a high priority for, for external reporting. And this gets to the point about layered measurement, that behind uh, these outcome measures that matter are a whole bunch of changes in the way that care is organized and changes in the processes of care that can lead to the better outcomes. The point of a layered approach to measurement is recognizing that all these things are related. Just because we don't have public reporting on a lot of process measures doesn't mean they're unimportant. Uh, and in fact, uh, having systems that are based on producing uh, a lot of uh, these kinds of data for internal use can help lead to more confidence that we're actually getting better outcome results for patients. So uh, there are different kinds of measures that are relevant to different purposes for public reporting and for payment, uh, I hope we do continue to see a shift towards outcome measures, but it's important to recognize that those have limitations when used on their own. They can be noisy, there will be small sample sizes for particular providers or groups. That doesn't mean we can't use them, it just means that we need to use them with a recognition that these different measures are related to each other and that a layered or more systematic approach to thinking about performance measurement can help us get to more confidence in the outcome measures that we'd like to see. So we've seen a lot of change and evolution in the payment delivery systems over the last number of years. Where do you think we're heading? We're going to see a continuing shift away from traditional fee-for-service payment methods towards payment methods that are more based on the whole person and the overall results of care. And there are a lot of reasons for that. One is to save money. Um, providers are pretty tired of seeing their rates cut in an effort for cost control, and that doesn't really solve the problem. If you just pay less for primary care, uh, you tend to get less of it, less effective, and that leads to higher costs elsewhere, for example. In contrast, uh, payment systems that shift uh, the resources away from volume and intensity of traditional healthcare services towards better results for patients 
give providers more of an opportunity to do what they got into medicine in the first place to do, to provide the right care for an individual patient. But I think it's not just about the cost savings. The fact of the matter is that with new development of wireless technology, cell phones, uh, we're going to start seeing some of the same kinds of transformations in care and healthcare as we've seen in other industries. Uh, going to the hospital, even going to the doctor's office is probably going to be a lot less necessary in the next few years than it's been in the past. If you can be monitored more accurately, uh, conveniently, and at a lower cost from home uh, for management of your chronic disease, or even if you've got a very serious condition, if a, a team of providers can help give you preventive targeted services uh, at home or in the community, that's a lot cheaper than waiting for a complication to occur and having all the costs associated with the emergency room visit or a hospitalization. This is a process though to get from the way that care is delivered now and the way that we pay for it now to what it will be in the future. And making more progress on performance measures can lead to more confidence uh, among healthcare providers and especially among patients and the public uh, that these changes are leading to better outcomes and lower costs, that this isn't just another ill-fated effort to try to reduce costs in the short term without really improving quality and improving access to, to high quality personalized care. Thanks for joining us, Dr. McClellan. This is the NPC Now podcast.